to Sarah, Guy, Sandy, Heather, Wilkes. Don't tell me. I, name is basketball. I know, I know, and you just said it, Kobe. That's true. And then Molly, yeah. all right? Um, don't talk to your dog the whole time that you're here. That's your challenge, all right? Zip the lip, all right? Because what happens a lot is we're talking to them. They're whispering the whole time. We're giving them all this input, and it means absolutely jack crap to the dog, okay? They speak dog, right? Mm -hmm. We speak English. So all of this stuff is about speaking the same language, right? We want to get on the same page. We want to know that we're actually communicating something to them, okay? My name's Matt Burnett. I'm from Texas originally, from Dallas-Fort Worth area. I was the GM at Global K9 for a little while, and then I started my own business and have been doing that full-time now for five years. I've been training dogs for 14. Um, I am the training director at Rural Animal Rescue Effort, which is right down the road. Don't visit us. Don't knock on our door. Don't honk your horn when you go by. But if you want to come see some dogs, call me, text me. You're welcome to come visit. You're welcome to also come just let your dog run. Uh, we have a big pet sim property. Our backyard is about that big right there. So we've got enough room to run. Um, it's free. <laughs> you don't need to pay us or anything. But we do have a lot of rescue animals. So if you know anybody who uh, would like to foster or something like that, we're always open to that. Um, also volunteer opportunities. So the main reason that I got into pet dog training was that I wanted to make sure that people had the ability to keep dogs in their home. Because let's face it, the reason that dogs go into rescue is because at some point there was a deficit that they could not fill. Okay? So ultimately, all the dogs that are with us, we foster probably about 20 or 30 dogs at a time. And then we have six dogs of our own. And then I do a little bit of boarding for my, for my training clients, okay? I'm not making a dime to be here today. Um, for, for me, this is practice for me to teach seminars. So what you'll notice is that if you do a couple of things, your dog will calm down. Your dog's energy will be a lot more chill, right? Notice that when if you first got here and Lucky was screaming, basically, at Rusty and at Sandy, and Sandy was doing what? Talking to him, right? But that's what we do, right? That's that's what we do to calm each other down. So if, if someone gets in a wreck, hey, everything's okay, right? Everything's going to be fine. I'm going to help you out. If you do it to a dog, they're just like, no! <laughs> right? Panic, right? Stay away from me. So super, super important that we realize that we're on a different wavelength here, okay? So I'm just going to go through some really simple stuff that you guys can do on a day-to-day -day basis that is going to put relevance back in your corner, all right? Relevance just means uh, the dog putting value on you, okay? So when you say, my dog doesn't listen, right? My dog blows me off. My dog doesn't recall. That's called relevance, okay? Whenever we're talking about behavior, you probably covered this in your high school or college class. Whenever you're talking about behavior, you have four options, right? If I want to increase a behavior, what's that called? Reinforcement. 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 What about if I want to decrease a behavior? What's that called? It's a bad word. It's a naughty word. We hate to use it. Some of us are gluttons for it. Correct. Punishment. Punishment. That's right. So I want you to think of positive and negative here, not as a judgment call or a criticism of good or bad, but as adding and taking away. All right? So if it's positive, that means I'm adding something. If it's reinforcement, it means I'm increasing, okay? So you're adding something to increase. You're removing something to increase. You're removing something to decrease. Or you're adding something to decrease. And that is the order that I like to take things in, okay? That's all great. That means nothing. You can forget everything that I just said. We're going to simplify this a little bit. What can I add to the dog? What can I give to the dog that will encourage the likelihood of that behavior again in the future? Treat. Treat? To Sarah has something. What is that? It's a positive attention. What's in your hand? This is a treat. <laughs> no, the other one. Oh, a there toy. A toy. <laughs> treat, toy, what else? So I think someone said it. Petting. Petting. Touch. All right. Yeah. Treat, toy, or touch. What's that called? Positive <laughs> reinforcement. Yes, but what else is it called? What's another word for it? Reward. Reward. Ah, there we go. Reward. Nailed it, Bill. Yes, sir. All right. So treat, toy, or tough. So put simply, reward. Okay? What about negative reinforcement? This is always a funny one because 
what we all, what usually when we hear negative reinforcement, we think corrections, right? That's our, the first thing that we go to. I'm going to go ahead and cheat for you and go ahead and call this correction down here. And everyone's going to sit there and question in their head how I wrote that down there. What is negative reinforcement? What can I take away from the dog Your to toy. increase the likelihood of something? What was that? Their toy or something that they like. Okay. What else? Their freedom. Leash. Their freedom? Yeah. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. Did you see me working with him just a second ago? What did I do with the leash? Pressure and then I let him have it back. And then I let him have it back. Okay. This is called release. release. All right. This is more of a release. I'm giving the dog back the thing that I withheld from them, okay? Which means that I actually have to withhold it from him. I have to control the resource, okay? Now notice, as I stepped toward him, he went like this with his paw, right? But what he didn't do is go, hur, 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 and bay like he was before. That was really good, okay? I'm slowly getting him a little bit more acclimated to me as we go, because I am going to work him here in a second, all right? So the release of pressure, okay? What is negative punishment? So I'm taking something away to decrease a behavior. Taking some from them, a strike, or what's that? A, a hit or a tap or something like that. A hit or a tap? Okay. Well, then that's possible. That would be that more this, right? I'm sorry. What'd you say, Molly? Crate. Crating them? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Like a lot of like uh, taking away their freedom. Yeah. Taking away their freedom, yeah. right? Okay, that's that's huge. I call that removal or refusal. Okay. And essentially, what that does is it's not directly, none of these things in the moment necessarily are, that's the thing with these quadrants is that none of these things in the moment are doing the thing that we are intending here. We only know after we've done it, right? So to, to a certain degree, dog trainers and you as a dog owner, you have to be like a scientist where you're actually experimenting a little bit. So if you have a specific behavior that you're dealing with, uh, leash reactivity, right? Resource guarding, <laughs> all the things, eating remotes, right? Um, socialization, any of this stuff, you have to think about all these different options, okay? If you have a dog that's resource guarding, the best way to, to capture that is to start to control every single resource, food, water, clothing, toys, shelter. You have access to all of it. You're controlling all of it. And you know what's funny? That actually causes a dog to become more confident. The last one is positive punishment, okay? I'm adding something to decrease a behavior, okay? Did you see what I did to him a second ago? I took the leash, I did not create pressure, I did not create tension, okay? Go ahead and come sit down. Don't look at anybody, don't talk to anybody, don't let him happen, okay? All right, so what do you see on the leash there? Pressure. Pressure, tension, right? Tension is the number one cause of reactivity, all right? If you alleviate tension, then you alleviate the reactivity. That's why when it, you put a dog on a leash, they act a fool, okay? Let me see Zuko for a second. Zuko! Yeah, there Is tension a correction? Is tension a correction? I would say constant tension, no. No, it's not, right? So it's really not effective in mitigating reactivity. So just doing this actually will make the problem worse. So with that leash right there, Sandy, I want you to simply go, and I want you to give him a leash pop. Okay? Very good. Okay? Every time that he starts to get up and to move away from me, I'm going to give him a light leash pop. Okay? So there's a pop and there's a pull. All right? The leash should be slack, right? Whenever you're just standing there, it should not have tension. In it. No. I told you to sit. You're still sitting. That's good. If he tries to get up and move away, I'm just going to say, no, give him a light leash pop. All right? Very good. So what I was trying to explain here is ultimately that if you're giving dog tension on the leash, it means that you're trying to communicate something. And if you're not trying to communicate something, there shouldn't be tension on the leash. There should be slack. See how cute you are when we put you under some pressure here. <laughs> All right. Uh, what's an example of a correction? You just went through one a second ago. The leash pop. The leash pop. Okay. What else? Th there should be something that I want you to think of this more as an interruption in thought process. Okay. So if you have behavior, 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 and it's escalating and it's getting more and more, how do you train a really beautiful Malinois to go after a decoy? You turn on tension. 
you turn on pressure. And then through that tension and pressure, it explodes into the reactivity that you have focused and channeled for a purpose, right? That's why they're so good at what they do. So ultimately, when we're dealing with all of this stuff, this is all great, right? But we're not scientists and we're not dog trainers per se. What I would rather do is teach you some really simple exercises that you can use with your dog that are going to be pretty straightforward, okay? The first one is, uh, we talked about that positive reinforcement. It's called free shaping. Does anybody know what free shaping is? No? Free shaping? Okay. Free shaping is the use of food or some sort of reward to allow your dog to offer things to you naturally without you giving a cue, without you giving a command, without you giving pressure or any sort of uh, maybe spatial pressure. The dog is offering things to you without you doing a single thing. So all we're waiting for is a behavior from the dog that we want. All right, name off some behaviors. Uh, that we want. Uh, three calls, sit, yeah. stay. Call. That, that is a behavior. That's what they say to mine, I guess. <laughs> Down. 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 Off. Off. Leave it. Go. Drop it. Should we go on? <laughs> Should we go on? <laughs> so a lot of you are saying commands. Sit. So these are things that a dog is doing. They can like, I don't know why I can't look at Anyway. Um, the next thing that needs to happen is we need to identify somehow that the dog is doing what we want them to do, all right? And that is called a marker. Um, a couple examples of a marker is I can say no. yes, Same. I can say good, I can say good Same. boy, whatever. Like you can do whatever you want to for your marker, all right? I like yes because I carry my yes with me everywhere. I don't have to use a hand for it and uh, my dog never gets tired of hearing it because right after I say yes, I... <laughs> A reward. That's right. So when I give that reward, which can be what? Three things. Treats. Treat. Treat. Toy. Yep. And a pet and a head. And touch. That's right. Excellent. You guys are awesome. All right. So what this process does is, what was the word that I said that everybody is looking for? It's an R word. Not recall, but reward. relevance. Relevance. Okay. Relevance. This whole quadrant right here, the number one purpose of positive reinforcement is to establish relevance between you and your dog, okay? What I, establish relevance, okay? So, for example, Bernie is very excited about me, all right? I don't know why, but I'm going to handle him here in just a second. Who's he not looking at? He wants a bike. His owners. <laughs> his owners, right. Why does he not look at his owners? He feels they're not relevant. All right. So whenever you get into a situation where you have zero relevance and lots of depression, what usually happens? They go nuts, right? Yeah. The, the dog is like, I don't need to pay attention to you. I'm getting fulfillment out of all this other stuff, right? So there are times that I can park in this, this, this uh, quadrant here of negative punishment, and I can literally just ignore the behavior that the dog is doing. The problem is, and eventually the behavior would go away if it's not reinforcing in and of itself, right? So if he's jumping on people, jumping, 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 nonstop, that is very fulfilling for a dog. If he's barking, 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 nonstop, that is very fulfilling for a dog, especially barrier aggression, right? Barrier reactivity, right? It's so fun to explode on another dog through a fence. Why? <laughs> Why? Just you. They they react. Back. Yeah. yeah. And and there's a wall, right? Yeah. Like, Same. I would love to go up to a UFC fighter and be like, I'm going to totally own you, dude. <laughs> right? <laughs> right? Yeah. With a wall in front of us. As soon as that wall goes away, hey, hey, hey. <laughs> oh, oh, that was some other guy, you know? Um, so when it comes down to establishing relevance, the goal is to ultimately create a matrix of motivation for that particular dog to start putting that relevance on you, all right? So whenever we start to talk about, oh, well, I go out in public and my dog's reactive. I go out in public and my dog is focused on everything but me. They don't recall to me. They don't call, they don't, won't call back to me. What does that mean about you taking the dog off the leash? It's not gonna be a good idea, okay? Have you ever let your dog off the leash and they didn't come back? <laughs> Yeah? Or, or maybe not for a second. Maybe they, they just didn't come back immediately. Um, so lack of recall is one of the number one problems in dogs. And I think everybody said lack of recall, right? Dog's not coming back to me. The first reason is because you haven't caught it, okay? The second reason is that you don't have relevance. 
I want you guys to try to do this about five to ten minutes a day, all right? Pretty simple. Not not an insane ask. What are you doing? Yeah, there you go. Now, he and I have done this for about five minutes, I think, when I first, like a couple months ago. And after so, he left, within an hour, I had to another, another uh, command. Yeah, exactly. And two, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, he took a really long nap after that and was wiped out. Even when I was there, he, like, passed out on yeah. the floor. So if you ever have a dog, you're not going to physically exhaust a dog, all right? Especially a Malinois. Right. Yeah. The best way to exhaust a dog physically, mentally, emotionally is to train them. All right. And training doesn't have to be this hour session every day. It can literally be five to ten minutes a couple times a day. All right. Two of the four things I'm about to list off. The first one is shaping. The second one is structured walking. The third one is some special engagement through play. And then the fourth one is some stimulation. What did I ask you to do when he was barking, barking, barking? I had to walk around long leash. Yep. Yeah. Did it help? Yeah, it did. Did it stop completely? Yeah. It, it did. Yeah, yeah. yeah, pretty fast. Yeah. So we needed to take the pressure off just a little bit and allow Lucky a chance to just decompress, right? So with Rusty, you see that I have some relevance. Yes. Good boy. What commands am I giving him? Yes. Yes. No commands. That's right. I'm not giving him a command. What pressure am I using? Yes. Correct. Well, existential pressure, maybe a little bit. <laughs> he likes me, okay, so he's like, I want to please you, and, you know, I'll do what I can. All right? So in this exercise, I wanted to add a voiceover really quick just to explain the markers that I use in the exercise. I use yes as a paid marker, after which I give him a piece of food. I use break as a reflexive marker to have him move away from me. I then use yes to pull him back into my space. And then when I want him to use a when I want to use a keep going signal or a non-reward marker, I use the word good. You'll see here in just a second that when I say good, he actually proceeds into a down because he knows that that's the next logical step in behavior. Pretty simple, right? What command did I give him the whole time? Mm. Nothing, right? So, and again, this is the second time that I've shaped with him, and I think the first time was like 5, 10, 15 minutes, something like that. Great. Go see mama. Oh boy. All right, that's called free shaping, all right? What free shaping does is it allows the dog to offer things to you proactively that you're not giving any sort of command for, and the reason for that is so that they can start to earn their food, so that they can start to earn a toy. So the best way to take advantage of that is to move from giving the dog everything that they want all the time to an existential food reward system for a, a period of time. I especially love doing this with labs because labs are so food motivated, right? Ellie is going to pick up on this. Lickety split, all right? Bring her around here. What behaviors did I get out of Rusty in three minutes? Sit a, a sit, a down. I just waited for you. He did. What did he stop doing? Jumping, getting up on the table, etc. Paying attention to other dogs. What was the other thing that we all needed to work on? Recall. Recall. That's right. Even if it's from here to there, right? Just a little short distance recall. Okay. So what I want you to do is go ahead and come back just a hair, a tiny bit, and you're going to use this path right here. Okay. Um, that's what. 15 feet, right? Mm -hmm. That is enough space to train your dog on everything that you need to know. Okay? Uh, is that one leash or two? It's one. Oh, okay, yeah. gotcha. I was like, oh, it's, it's got two loops on. All right? So what I want you to do is exactly what I just did. You're going to hold this in one hand, and you're going to use your voice as your clicker. Okay? Can you use a clicker? Absolutely. The only way to use a clicker is every, or the best way to use a clicker is the dog performance behavior. Instead of saying yes, you click, right? Pretty easy, right? Now, when I said good a second ago, what did I not do? I didn't give the treat. I didn't pay him, right? Which caused him to then do what? Lay down. Yep, he went into a further behavior, okay? So yes is a paid marker. Good is a non-paid marker. And it causes the dog, uh, it's kind of like a keep going signal. So 
keep going. Give me something a little bit more, okay? I want you to just do one piece of kibble at a time, and I want you to just kind of move around for just a second. Okay? Like let her long? Yep, and every time that she looks at you, I want you to say yes, and I want you to say relax your arm. There you go. Step away. There you go. Right there. Yes. Yes. Miss it. Back up. Marker. Right there. Yes. Oh, yes. See that timing? Okay. So as soon as the dog offers the behavior that you're looking for, you mark it with the yes, and then you pay it with the food. All right. Pretty simple. All right. Now out here, this is a high distraction environment for any dog. All right. Especially a puppy. So that is perfect. Okay. What I want you to do, Molly, is in the morning I want you to find a really quiet spot. You can come up here. You can just chill for a second. What, what I want you to do is find a really quiet spot, maybe a long uh, hallway or something like that, and I want you to sit in a chair with her food, and I want you to say nothing except for yes, and then pay the dog. Okay. okay? And what that's going to do is she's going to start to offer you a sit. She's going to start to offer you recall. Every couple reps, what you're going to notice is that she needs a break. Right? <laughs> so that's when you can say, that's when you can go, what are you doing? I'm silly. Yes. Good girl. Oh, yes. I'm gonna go hold. It's kind of spongy. <laughs> yeah, it's so weird. Oh. Yes. Okay. So when dogs are jumping on you, the best thing to do is a little little knee bop right there. Nothing painful. Not kicking the dog, right? Um, but just a little bit of a correction. And then once the dog redirects to the sit, then I'm going to pay him for the sit. Okay? Correct what you don't want, pay the things that you do want. Okay? So what you're going to do is spend about five minutes in the morning with her food, with her kibble, and just pay her her breakfast through shaping. Do this as her breakfast. Because if you do that as an existential food reward, what happens is relevance is all on mom. Because you control every single resource. Okay? So if you have you have three dogs in the home, right? Or are there more? Uh, there are two yeah, others. Two others. So there's five dogs in the home, all right? How many people are in the home? Five. Okay. Awesome. Very good. So if there were five dogs and three people, you'd be people living in a dog pack, right? Um, people say, the dog's part of our pack or whatever. And I'm like, no, you, you have a pack of dogs living with you, right? Um, your dog... Dogs don't. You can go sit down. Okay, excellent job. Everybody give her a hand. Oh, hey. hey. All right. So ultimately, when it comes down to um, to pack dynamics or pack management or whatever you want to call it um, inside the home, when you have more dogs than there are people, you have to have a lot of great structure, right? So with Trisha and I, there's two of us, and there's 30 dogs, right? What does that mean? We have to have a lot of structure, okay? With structure on one hand and exposure on the other, I can have some predictability. I can have some, some very consistent uh, predictability, which gives me some freedom with that dog. Okay, I can give them more freedom as I know that they're going to be predictable. Okay, I love the way that she came up under a guy's arm and just tucked her nose under there. That was awesome. And to Sarah, it felt like she could give her that freedom because she, it was, she was acting in a predictable manner. Now, if she was like, ooh, ooh, you know, like whining and stuff and trying to get under his arm, she would probably have held, him, held her back, right? So if you want freedom, you have to have, what's that P word? Positive. Predictability, all right? If you want predictability, you have to use structure and exposure, okay, at the same time. So why is my dog still exploding? I, I take him on walks every day. Right? I expose them to stuff every day. But what are you not doing in your walk? You're not structuring your walk. Okay? So I want you guys, I have a challenge for you. Very simple. All right? I want you to take your dog's food every day and put it into two baggies. And I don't want you to feed anything to that dog out of a bowl at all for two weeks, let's say. Okay? Every single meal, every single kibble comes from your hand. All right? 
what will happen very quickly is that your dog will go, you're the source of everything, right? You're, you, you create relevance in my life. You create happiness. You keep me alive, right? So as you do that, what happens is that the tables start to turn on all those reps that you put in of saying, stop, no, down, off, leave it, right? I said, give me a list of behaviors, and you're saying commands, all right? It's two different things, right? Think about it in terms of the dog. What do I want the dog to do? How can I teach them to do it? All right? Yes. Because we're having the trouble with the potty training. You told me yes. to put the water and the food. Uh -huh. It's been helping. Good. But that means that I can't. Exactly. So you, have to, <laughs> so you have to measure out your water. That's a really good question. So the um, recommendation that I made to Molly was if you're having trouble with potty training, mix the food and the water together, let it sit, let it swell up. It slows the absorption of water into the dog's system, so it has less messes. So she said, if I'm doing free shaping, how do I do that? The right answer is start to ration your water. So you measure out your water. Say this is your cup and a half for the first part, or your cup for the first part of the day. And at lunch, you get another cup. And at dinner, you get another cup. She's, what, 35 pounds? Mm -hmm. So she should be eating 3.5 cups of food and 3.5 cups of water for the entire day, right? How much is 3.5 cups? Not a lot, okay? I think these are actually 12 ounces. So that's a cup and a half and a cup and a half. That's three right there, all right? So um, when we're talking about relevance and, and building the connection between us and the dog, the first thing that you've got to do is do a little bit of that shaping, okay? When I post this video later, I'm actually going to put a link to free shaping videos, um, to multiple free shaping videos on that video, okay? So you guys can go back and look at it and go, okay, I actually see, <coughs> excuse me, I actually see what he's talking about here. Um, any questions about that? Yes, sir. Well, um, back to the food, right? Yes. I like that. Or, you know, so if you happen to have a basket of dog toys, pick those up too so they can't just Bingo. Toys. Yes, that's right. All right, so toys. So, becomes a re also a reward. Right? What's another thing? Oh, touch. Yeah, you know how we touch them? It's like we're addicted to them. We're like, right? Which is fine. They're pets because we pet them, right? <laughs> like, I, I like to touch my dogs. And uh, I've had trainers say before, well, don't touch your dog for like three weeks. And I'm like, that's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. But there's something to that. Touch is a reward. So if you're constantly touching all the time, what does it lose? It's relevance and it's value, right? You guys are smart. This is great. All right, we're going to take a break really quick. Um, before we do take a break, any questions about shaping or about the yo-yo game? I'm going to now, send you a video on this. He kind of free feeds all day. He doesn't eat all this food at once okay. goes in a bowl. So still just do a baggie and... Twice a day. Mm -hmm. Or once a day, whatever. Yes. And then you can feed him as dinner. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's from you. Yeah. All right, we're going to take a break. We're going to be back here in five minutes, okay? So, right.